We was on the bottom, yeah. Now we headed to the top, new level. On my level, don't see anybody. I don't see them. This right here could never stop. This could never stop. Hey, this right here could never stop. Hold up, nah, nah. Hey, this right here could never stop. Hold up, nah, nah. Hey, this right here could never stop. Hold up, nah, nah. Hey, this right here could never stop. Hold up, nah, nah. One time, one time. Hey. I live on a job, right? Yeah, I'm always at work, right? Real people stay by me, right? Haters wanna do hurt, right? No, they tryna stop me, right? Drag my name through dirt, right? I don't feed into the hate, right? I just answer with a smirk, facts. I feel so special, facts. I know my worth, facts. My bloodline royal, facts. We the kings of the earth, right? You can't stop this, nah, nah. You can't stop this, no way, yo. So-called Jamaicans, so-called African Americans, we are the Israelites, according to the Bible. Read on. Many of the Jews who were banished from Portugal uh -huh. by John II settled in the West Indies. Where did they settle? Settled in the West Indies. That's your Jamaica. That's your Bahamas. That's your Trinidad and Tobago. That's where our people are, but God calls them the Israelites. Read on. John Bigelow, who visited Jamaica in 1850, saw the descendants of these Jews. So John Bigelow knew who the Jews were. Yeah. They knew who they were. So now, we're going we to read it in the Bible. How did we get from Spain to, uh, to Jamaica to America? Give me that in Deuteronomy 28. Slave ship. Exactly, by slave ship. So yeah. Carl, you know a little bit about history. So if you know that you can't go around calling yourself a Jamaican no more, what should you be calling yourself? You should be calling yourself an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. That's right. That's what God calls you. Read uh, verse 68. We're going to show you the means of how we move from one island or one uh, continent to the next. 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. How are we going to be moved from continent to continent? With ships. Carl, what did it just say? Ships. Come take a look at this sign. I want you to see how we got back. Look at life. Let's show history too. Check me out. They had the, the kids on top of the women and then the women on top of the men. So if the kid had a bowel movement or an upset stomach, yeah. where would all that matter go to? Oh, no. To the woman. What if the woman was on her menstrual cycle? It would go to the man. What if there was a dead body strapped together? Disease, infestation, right? But before they did that, they had us linked together like a sardine in a sardine can. Right. It's the blueprint on the top of the ship. Exactly. This is how we was on the top. This is how we was on the bottom. And they didn't, they didn't escape nobody. The men were there, the kids were there, and the women were there. Right. Letting you know that, hey, none of us are separate because God brought us all into captivity. Read it again. How did we get into captivity? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With ships, Carl. With ships, Liza. Go, uh, hold that. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 1. I want to show you who Moses is talking to right here. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 1. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel. So if God told the children of Israel, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim on down, if you don't keep my commandments, I'm going to put you on a slave ship and send you all over the world. And that happens to be Carl's history and Liza's history. Who does that make us? That makes us the Israelites. That's, that's right. That makes us the the, the, the the most secret untold story that has been kept from our people right. since we got off the slave ship. What about the great flood? The great flood with, Mo, with, with Noah? That was before this. Understand? Back then we was called something else, but now God calls us the Israelites. Yeah. So let me show you what happened, Carl. Let me show you what happened, Liza. Because something had to happen where God took his chosen people and then sent them away. Give me Deuteronomy 11 and 26. I'm going to catch y'all up. I'm going to show you why it happened. Because we know it happened. Can we deny it happened, Liza? Can we deny it happened, Carl? All right, we're going to show you why it happened. Deuteronomy 20, I'm sorry, 28 and, uh, 11 and verse 26. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 26. Behold, I have set before you this day a blessing and a
and a curse. So the Most High God set before his children, the Israelites, a blessing and a curse. In the, in the Christian church, they tell you God is all blessings. Nope, 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 not the God of Israel. He gives you blessings and curse, and then it's up to you to decide which one you want. Read on. A blessing if he obey the commandments of the Lord. So how you get blessed, Paul? Oh, Liza answered it. Read it one more time for Carl so you can catch up. One more time. A blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God. Read. Which I command you this day. Uh-huh. And a curse. And a what? And a curse. Carl, what's a curse? Curse is the spell? Okay. I'm going to show you a curse. A punishment. Life is on it. A curse is a punishment. It's a punishment. So why would these curses come? Read it again. And a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. But turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods. So God made a covenant with us. He said, you know what, my children? You keep my commandments, I'm going to bless you. If you don't keep my commandments, I got curses for you. I'm going to read one curse, Carl, Liza. And y'all tell me if these curses fit everybody or they just fit one group of people, which would be the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28 and read verse 16 for Liza and Carl. Because right now, y'all are learning who y'all are. Carl, when you leave from here, you got to call yourself Benjamin. Right. Liza. Benjamin, you can't go around calling yourself West, which is a direction. Indies means slave I remain, and black is a color. That don't mean nothing. Bring it out. Right. God calls you Benjamin, son of the right. right. That's what you got to go around calling yourself. That's right. So let me show you one curse to see if these curses fit us or maybe another people. Read verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 16. Huh? Curse shalt thou be in the city. So Carl, I'm going to start with you. What city you live in? Okay. Run a lot of hills, eight lies of you, same place. Before you came to America, what city you live in? In New York. In New York. Did you live in the up, uh, the upstate part of New York where they had like high rises and mansions and houses? You lived where? In the ghettos. What about you, Liza? Same thing? Okay. In New York, they got something called a barrio. That's the, the barrios, right? The projects. How come our people always dwell in these areas? Hey, we got the Bible dictionary. Let me get the word ghetto. I'm going to show y'all something with the word ghetto. Out. So you say you live in the barrio. You live in Lotta Hill. There's Lotta Hill, which is the upscale part of Florida. This is the last. You're like, nah, nah. Certain parts of Florida is, if you go across the train tracks closer to the beach, right. totally different. Right. But when you get to the 31st, you get to the MLK Boulevards, right. then you start seeing the darker shades. Right. You start seeing the separation, separation so-called Spanish people, black people living in ghettos, waiting on the next stimulus check, right. waiting right. on the next handout. in the best areas. So God calls that a curse. Read it again. Curse shalt thou be in the city. God says you're going to be cursed in the city. You know what else happens in the city to know that we curse? All right, this is your daughter? All right. Can you trust your daughter to walk on the streets at 10, 11, 12 o'clock by herself in the city? Yeah. Because we got people out here that snatching up our daughters, right. snatching up our wives. Bring it out. Never see them again. Right now we got over what is it? 64,000 64, missing black and brown girls. Right. And no one seems to care. Based on a, a missing post or behind a milk carton, no one cares. No news coverage of that. Lil, Lil Susan goes missing. We got an Amber alert on the phone. Right. Nobody care about that now. Let's keep it moving. That's it. Let it go. Whatever. So, God said you'd be cursed in the city. Let me show you another one. Be cursed in the cities. In the inner cities, right? The household is normally separated where single parent household, the woman's raising the kids, or the man raising the kid by himself. Normally not a married home. That's cursed being in the city. We got drugs, violence, gangs, influence. Murder, all of those things, prostitution, all of that happens Burn. in the city. Yeah. You ever heard about the inner city? Yeah. Exactly. That's what happens in the inner city. What's your name? 
Huh? Jeremiah, your name. Marcus, and, and what? Jordan. So we, we're dealing with Lala, uh, Carl, and Liza. We're showing them that they're the Israelites. All right, we're showing our people who they are based on what God says. Read this verse again, and I'm going to catch all of y'all up. Read verse 16 again. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 16. Curse shalt thou be in the city. So you young, you young men, y'all live in the city too, right? Y'all live right here in Lotter Hill? So can y'all tell me some things that goes on in Lotter Hill after dark? Is it the best neighborhood to live in? Or do we have a lot of police activity? Do we have gang activity? Do we have breaking and entering, stealing and thievery going on? Does that happen everywhere or does that normally only happen in our community? Yeah. Our community. You know, you know why that happens? Because the young men don't really have a father figure. So when they don't have a father figure around, you know what they tend to, to lean to? Another person that leads them into gangs, the streets, end up doing things that they know they shouldn't be doing. Y'all right. y'all young brothers, y'all ever in, uh, uh, encountered uh, what's it called? Uh, a peer pressure? Peer pressure, even the young girls too. And you know where all that happens? Right here in the city, read it again. Yeah. Curse shall thou be in the city. The reason why we curse in the city, you young brothers, is because God calls us the Israelites. And we don't know that we the Israelites. We call ourselves, what's your father? Come on, look closer. What's your father's nationality? What's your father's race? Right here. Say your name with Derek, right? Jordan, what's your father's nationality? Come on up, you two. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get y'all in here, too. If you're a black man, Jamaican, Haitian, Bahamian, what is it? Haitian. God calls you from the tribe of Levi. Right. Right here, Nike shirt. What is your father's nationality? I'm, I'm going to bring it all out for them. I need to know their nationality so I can bring it in. What's up? Haitian. Look, God don't call you Haitian. Because the word Haitian means uh, mountainous land. Watch yourself, sis. It means mountainous land. God calls you Levi. Right. Means joint to God. Huh? Right. What about you? Huh? Brazilian. Oh, wow. What is God calls you Asher. That's right. Right here. God calls you Asher. So all of y'all will be Israelites from the nation of Israel. Tribe of Asher, tribe of Levi, we got Lala from the tribe of Judah, Carl from the tribe of Benjamin, Liza from the tribe of Benjamin as well. So I'm gonna ask y'all a question because I see y'all might have other things to do. What does Christ look like in the Bible? Take a look at this image right here. What? What? Light. Come over here, take a look at this sign. Light. Which image do they push in the churches? This one right here. Which one you say? This one right here, what about you, Liza? Which one is Christ? You got two images, which one? Which one? Is it the Jim Caviezel one? Is it the one with his head up? That one right there. Young man, you going? I do what you gotta do. So which one you say, Liza? The blue eyes one. Carl, what about you? Which one you say? Which one they show you is Christ? Which picture is it? Yeah. Is that iconic class? There you go. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that. Is it this one right here? Which one? No, no, no. Oh, this is the one everybody have in their house. Their grandma got that one on the wall. Oh, you see? Bob Marley. Bob Marley, okay. Take a look at, show them these pictures right here. Before I even get into the scriptures, y'all take a look at these pictures. Show, read the name of that book. This is Russian icon. So I'm gonna show you something that the Russians know that we don't know. Read it again. Russian icon. My father, Vladimir Ivanov. Okay. So, so the Russians know what Christ looked like because now you have these men coming oh, into our like records and painting the true image of Christ over with something called iconoclasm, yeah. meaning that they're whitewashing the Lord. So they're changing what his depiction looks like because the Bible records it. See, see look, a dark-skinned man. But, go back, they're making it into a white, pale-faced man. 
So now, see, look right here. Look. He got hair like wool. Sheep hair, hair like you. Hair like Liza. See that? Now they got him looking like this man over here with blonde hair, blue eyes. But they're throwing on his head to throw us off. Then they throw it in the movies. Yeah. Now, I want to show you what they did with our images. Read that in First Mac with that. 343 or 48? First Maccabees, chapter 3 and verse 48. And laid open the book of the law. Which is the Bible. Wherein the heathen. The other nations. Anybody outside these 12 tribes, God calls them the heathen. Read. Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. Of whose images? Of their images. So if they're painting their images over the true image, that means they're covering up what Christ really looks like. And the Bible records what he looks like. Give me that in Revelation. Well, oh, read him first back of these three again. First Maccabees chapter 3 verse 48 uh -huh. and laid open the book of the law which is the Bible wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So if they're painting their images which they show us in movies that means they're coming up the true image. Right. So now we're going to go to the Bible and the Bible's going to give us what Christ looks like. Right. Because they say nobody knows, right? They say nobody knows. All right, y'all go around. Take a look at this image as we really. Yeah. Yeah, we're not supposed to idolize it. But read it one more time. I'm going to show the sister. Uh, uh. Yeah, that's what they show us in churches. But they don't show us what Christ really looks like. They don't give us the true image. Read that scripture one more time for that sister. First Maccabees chapter 3 verse 48 and laid open the book of the law wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So if they're painting the likeness of their image, listen Carl, if they're painting the likeness of their image, it has to be an image that was there before, letting you know that we had our own images. But since we went into captivity, they, they took our image and gave them their image. Give me that in, in Revelation 1. Revelation 1. Since you ain't got to cry, you, you, learning, you learning the greatest knowledge ever known to man today? Right. Go back to Yes, sir. Read Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. And now the scriptures is about to reveal what Christ looks like. Yes, sir. Verse 14. Verse 14. His head and his head. So now we're about to get into Christ's head and his hairs. That means the hair on his head and the hair on his feet, on his face. Read. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So now it says his hair was white in color, woolly in texture. Carl, what people on the face of the planet have woolly hair or sheep's hair? There you go. So-called black men. Take a look at this image. Did this image have white or woolly hair? Straight hair. Straight hair. Like it was perm. <laughs> Can't even be in the Bible. Right. Read. As white as snow. Uh -huh. And his eyes. And his what? His eyes uh -huh. were as a flame of fire. That means his eyes had a red tint to it. Look at this man. He got the blue eyes going. Not in the scriptures. Right. That's why they had to open the book of the law and paint over our images. Right. Read. And his feet. Now we going down to his feet. I can see Lala's feet. Read. And his feet like unto fine brass. His feet like unto fine brass. You know what color brass is, Carl? Brown. So now it's like fine brass. Read on. As if they burned in a furnace. Now you take that fine brass or that brown and you throw in a furnace, what color you think is going to come out? Nice. It's going to come out dark. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. Christ, Christ had woolly hair and dark skin. Right. If Christ walked the earth today, Carl and Lala and Liza, they would call him a so-called black American. Negro. He would be called a black man. Negro. Understand? So Christ has a depiction. He ain't the so-called white man that they give us. The true image of Christ, he looks just like us. When I, when I see you, Carl, I see the Lord. I see Christ. Right. Right.
Shalom Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.